Good morning. I want to talk about being authentic this morning. As I've been thinking about this, I have a passage of scripture from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 21 through 23, that I want to read for you. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Understanding this passage drives me to a real relationship with God through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Initially in this passage, Jesus says there's going to be many who say the right words. But I'm going to say it's the one who does the will of my Father, does God's will, that will get into heaven. And then he immediately follows it up with there are going to be some people who do all the right things, but I'm still going to say I don't know who you are. I think we've all known people that say, do what I say, not what I do, whether they say that outright or that's how they live. So many of us are inclined to think we're the exception to the rule, that the rules apply to everyone else but us. And so it's that do what I say, don't do what I do kind of attitude. But I mean, really, do you think that you can say the right words and be okay? Uh, Even Satan, when Jesus is being tempted in the wilderness, even Satan quotes scripture So the ability to quote scripture and say the right thing obviously doesn't matter a whole lot. I mean, and do you think that doing the right things is going to be the answer here? Uh, For Jesus, he says, there's a lot of you that have prophesied my name, which means speak the word of God to people, hear from God and speak to people, that they've done mighty works in his name. So I mean, that's a far cry from, hey, I've gone to church and I've attended committee meetings and I tithe. Now, the way I read this, it's way more than what you say or what you do. It's your real heart for God and then how that gets lived out through your words and your actions. Which brings me to being authentic, to being real before God and real before others. And this gets incredibly hard in our digital world, right? You've heard the phrase being Facebook perfect. we want to present the best part of ourselves and when you're simply living in a digital world then it becomes really easy to do like I delete all the bloopers from this video reel and you'll never see them now none of us want to air our dirty laundry all over the world for people to see forever and ever but at the same time we don't need to simply present the best side of ourselves not just talking about being on Facebook or the internet, but in life. How can we be real and authentic with one another, with ourselves, and with God? I strive for real talk, real appearance, real life, real faith. Maybe that's a bad thing, but that's what I'm willing to go for. I had a professor in seminary, Dr. Tuttle, say at one point, I decided I wanted to only be as clean on the outside as I was on the inside. And so I'm a little dirtier on the outside, but I'm a whole lot cleaner on the inside. I think when we have trouble being honest with others, we also have trouble really being honest with God. At least I do. When I'm honest with God, I'm honest with others. And when I let God clean me up on the inside, I'm cleaner on the outside and I have a lot more to say and do concerning the amazing works of God in my life, work God's work restoring and forgiving me. I want faith that's not simply words or deeds, but faith that is from the heart, that comes out of my mouth and through my actions. So do you live trying to hide your faults from God and hide your faults from yourself? Or do you live striving to be honest with who you are before God and who you are with other people? So do you live trying to hide your faults from God and from yourself? Or do you strive trying to be honest with where you are and to listen to what God is trying to say and how you need to grow? What sins do you need to ask for forgiveness for? 
And how do you need to allow God to reconcile you to himself? You can only do this, really, if you're willing to be honest with God and with yourself. And then the joy of the Christian life, I think, is to be able to let God work his redemptive work in us and to be able to go forth into our world and share what he has done for us with those around us. Let me pray for us. God, thank you for your work in our lives. God, help us to open our hearts before you, uh, to come to you with who we are, to allow you to work in our lives. God, reach into our, our hurt and our brokenness, our loneliness, our sense of, of being lost right now with uh, this quarantine that is going on. God, we pray for our world for the folks that are searching for uh, vaccines or treatments. Uh, God, help them to work together as one for the benefit of humanity. God, we pray for those who are home by themselves uh, or, or home in bad situations. And God, bring your peace and your strength to our world. pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Grace and peace.